In this video, I'll be crafting a tabletop terrain staple, a ruined building. This is going to be constructed entirely out of XPS foam and will be designed in a way that works for both sci-fi and fantasy settings. Like most of my other projects, this build starts off with breaking down XPS foam. I'm going to be using a hot wire table with a fence attachment to cut the foam into thin sheets. If you'd like to follow along and don't have access to a hot wire table, then I'd suggest substituting XPS foam with a material that is already thin, such as foam board. I'm cutting down quite a few of these sheets since they will be used to create the primary building blocks of these ruins. I created templates prior to the crafting process in order to help with the next couple of steps. This will ensure consistency across my pieces. I get asked quite often about the availability of my templates, and I want you guys to know I hear you loud and clear. I'm happy to announce that I have formalized the templates of these ruins, and have made them available for a small fee that helps go towards supporting the channel. The templates include every piece needed to make these ruins, including their dimensions. I'm also working on the templates for the older builds as well, so stay tuned for those. Each wall is constructed with two sheets of foam. Both pieces have different window sizes, so when combined, they create a nice bevel that adds a bunch of dimension to the build. I'm using rolled up tinfoil to add some rough texture to the walls. The pieces are then glued together and left to dry. The stage is repeated a few times to build out all the pieces. A bunch of damage is added to these walls with a sharp hobby knife. This type of texture will stand out nicely once painted and makes the flat walls look more interesting. I'm cutting down a couple of wall pieces to make them shorter. These are going to be used for the sides of the building. I go back to the hot wire table to cut down some strips of XPS foam to be used as the base of each of the wall pieces. The dimension that these pieces give the walls will be important when it comes time to paint and flock this building. Parts of the top floor walls are then cut out to create a ruined look. A few advantages to using XPS foam is the ability to cut, tear, and rip the material to make it look damaged. The wall sections are then glued together and left to dry. Larger strips of XPS foam are then cut down on the hot wire table. These are going to be used as the corner pieces of the building, so I only need a few of them. Similar to the other pieces, these pillars are textured with rolled up tin foil, and then glued onto the larger wall pieces. I'm choosing to keep these buildings at two stories, since that's what will work best for my games but the design is simple enough to be repeated if more floors are required.
Additional ruined walls are constructed, but these are much smaller to accommodate a hand reaching into the building. I want these ruins to be functional on the tabletop when playing games. These walls are then glued onto the rest of the building. Next up is the floor section. I was originally thinking of something easy and flat, but I thought this could be an opportunity to do something more interesting. It was definitely more work, but I decided to create a broken wooden floor. Here's my prototype building as an example. I'll be working towards this in the next few steps. First up is to cut down a bunch of XPS foam strips. These are going to be two different sizes. The larger ones are for the bottom beams, and the thinner ones are for the top planks. I'm using a hot wire cutter with a wand attachment to add a wood grain to every piece of foam. Although this step is time intensive, I always feel like it's worth it based on the results. The larger vertical beams are glued in first. The thinner planks are then glued down one by one. I'm adding damage to the floor in select spots by tearing the foam pieces. I'm also making sure that the vertical beams are exposed by the ruined section of the building. The second floor is created by following the position of the vertical beams on the first floor. I'm then swapping out the building with machine blocks in order to get a flat edge to work against. Similar to the first floor, the planks are then glued on one by one, leaving damaged areas in select locations. The vertical beams are then torn to look naturally destroyed. I'm really glad I decided to go with the wood floor route. I think it fits both a sci-fi and fantasy setting and adds a bunch of interesting contrast to the rest of the building. Before gluing on the second floor, I add some extra detail to the walls by gluing on some beams. This will add some more depth to the flat walls. The second floor is then glued into place. The remaining beams on the second floor interior are then attached. Next, the foam pieces on the top floor were torn to match the damage of the walls. It's pretty satisfying to pick away at the foam to create some easy damage. And here's what the building looks like before moving on to the painting stage.
I'm starting off by base coating the building in black craft paint. This is going to act as my primer. I'm making sure there's 100% coverage here since any spots I miss in the next steps will look like shadows. I'm making sure to switch paintbrush sizes as I progress in order to get all the details. Next up I'm mixing white ink with a black contrast paint to make a grey color. This will be airbrushed from a top angle. This will make all the details including the damage of the ruins pop out. At this stage I noticed the building was looking too black and white. It really needed some colors in the undertone, so I went back and painted the walls in a dark greenish gray. I then go back and spray on the same gray mixture from the top. Brown ink was used to color the wooden floor sections. The sink was also used to add shadows in all the spots where the walls meet the base. This really helped with giving depth to the building's paint job. I'm going to take the shadows one step further by shaving down a pastel and creating some pigment powder. This is placed in all the crevices to really make the building pop. This effect looks like it could be either rust or grime which is perfect for a terrain piece that is used in both sci-fi and fantasy settings. The wood floors are then given an overbrush of a lighter brown to add some depth. And an even lighter brown is used on the edges of the planks to create a worn look. I'm creating a moss mixture by combining flock and PVA glue. This is placed in select locations and will help add more contrast to the runes, both in color and texture. Once dried, we can call these ruins done. And that wraps up this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe for future hobby content. I'll leave you with some shots of the finished train piece. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.